I am B. Janardhan Reddy. In this video, I will explain Ohm's law. In the previous video, I showed the lab activity related to Ohm's law. In continuation of that, in this video, I am going to explain Ohm's law. Before going to give the definition of Ohm's law and its discussion, I am going to show you an activity to understand how current passing through a conductor and the potential difference developed between the ends of the conductor are related. In order to understand that, here is an activity that I am going to show you all. Okay, see here an activity to show how V and I are related. This is a dry cell and here is an ammeter. Ammeter is an instrument which is used to measure current in amperes in a circuit. So here dry cell has the two terminals. Top end is the positive terminal. At the bottom end we have negative terminal and ammeter also has the two terminals. This black knob shows negative terminal whereas the red knob shows positive terminal. I am connecting the negative terminal of the dry cell to the negative terminal of the ammeter. See here. And I will connect the positive terminal of the dry cell or battery to an iron rod. Okay, so here the second end of the iron rod has been connected to the positive terminal of the ammeter through a key. So when the key is closed, some current will pass through this iron rod or iron spoke. When current passes through the iron spoke, some potential difference will be developed between the ends of this spoke. And to measure that potential difference, we have to use a voltmeter. I am going to connect a voltmeter between the ends of this iron spoke. Here, the voltmeter has been connected in parallel to the iron spoke and ammeter has been connected in series in the circuit. So, you should always remember, keep this in your mind every time. Ammeter should always be connected in series in the circuit, whereas the voltmeter always should be connected to parallel to the load okay to the load between which we are going to measure the voltage so here voltmeter has been connected in parallel to the load and ammeter has been connected in series okay if i close this key see what happens now so some current is flowing through the iron spoke because of that some voltage has been developed across its two ends. So how much voltage has come here, how much current is flowing in the circuit, we can see in these instruments. So here, up to here it is 1 ampere. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 amperes current is flowing through the iron spoke and here up to here it is 1, 1.5. So 1.5 volts. So the reading in the voltmeter is 1.5 volts and the reading in ammeter I equal to 0 0.4 amperes. Now let us calculate the ratio of V and I. 
okay so the ratio of v and i that is 1.5 divided by 0.4 equal to 3.75 okay so next what i am going to do is i will increase the capacity of the battery that means i want to make more current to pass through the iron spoke then what will happen let us see see here here five dry cells have been connected in a series isn't it so the negative terminal is connected to the positive of the next battery next dry cell and the second dry cell has been connected in the same way so here 1.5 1.5 1.5 1.5 like this so all these five dry cells of each 1.5 volts have been connected in series in order to increase the voltage that means i want to make to flow more current to pass through to pass more current through the circuit okay so now i am connecting negative terminal i will i will connect to the negative terminal ammeter and the positive terminal has been connected to the iron spoke the remaining circuit is as it is now let us close the key see here more current is flowing how much current is flowing through the iron spoke like this we are taking conventional current positive to negative like this current flows like this okay so here 2 amperes current is flowing through iron spoke next how much voltage has been developed between its ends here it is up to here it is 7 7.5 volts okay now let us calculate the ratio of v by i it is 7.5 by 2 we got 3.75 so in the previous case also when current was 0.4 amperes the voltage was 1.5 volts at that time also v by i we got 3.75 in this case also we got v by i is constant that is 3.75 only that means when current passing through the iron spoke is gradually increasing the voltage or the potential difference developing across its ends is also increasing proportionally okay so <clears throat> that we are going to see here so that means v is directly proportional to i more current flows more voltage will come across its ends less current flows less voltage will come will come across its ends okay like this now let us define what is ohms law you can see here this is a conductor suppose i current is flowing from left to right towards right direction through this conductor imagine like this what happens some voltage has been developed between the two ends of this conductor and this voltage or potential difference is v when i current is flowing the potential difference v got is v okay suppose if i increase the current the potential difference also has been increased isn't it so we can state the ohms law like this the potential difference v between the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the electric current i passing through it at constant temperature see here previously i showed small i and small v now i am showing big i big v that means when i is more v is more i is less v is less okay so this is called as the ohms law 
isn't it? So the potential difference between the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the electric current passing through it at constant temperature. Okay. So mathematically, we can write this as we can write uh, this mathematically as V is proportional to I. V is proportional to I. That means when I increases, V also increases. When I decreases, V also decreases. That means V by I is constant. This constant is called resistance of the conductor. It is denoted by R. So V is directly proportional to I means when I increases, V also increases. When I decreases, V also decreases. However, the ratio of V by I is always constant for particular conductor. At constant temperature only. Isn't it? So, this constant is called as the resistance of the conductor. Okay? So, Ohm's law relates three physical quantities. That is, voltage V, current I, resistance R. So, in order to know the correct form of the Ohm's law, here is a magic triangle to remember Ohm's law. Isn't it? So, see here. V, I, R. Suppose, if you want to find V value, just multiply I into R. So, like this. If you want I value, I equal to V divided by R. If you want to, to find R value, R equal to V by I. All these are the different forms of Ohm's law. See here. R equal to V by I. R equal to V by I. R. I equal to V by R. And another form, V equal to I into R. All these are the different forms of Ohm's law. Okay? So, in these, in all these forms, V is nothing but potential difference. I is nothing but current. R is nothing but resistance. Resistance of the conductor. Okay? And the SI unit of resistance is ohm. Okay? And we use uh, one symbol called omega. The symbol of ohm is omega. Okay? We know that R equal to V by I. That is, resistance of a conductor is equal to potential difference between the ends of the conductor divided by current passing through it. So, 1 ohm equal to 1 volt divided by 1 ampere. Resistance is measured in ohms. Voltage, that is potential difference is measured in volts and current is measured in amperes. So, 1 ohm equal to 1 volt by 1 ampere or 1 ohm equal to 1 volt per 1 ampere. And the circuit symbol for a resistor is like this. It is like a speed breaker. Isn't it? So, the circuit symbol for a resistor, that means if you want to represent, if you want to denote a resistor in the circuit, we have to draw like this. It is like a speed breaker symbol. Okay, so this is a circuit symbol of your resistor. Okay, thank you.